Hey, this is Ryan at GoFab CNC, and this is our new brain board, and this is our adapter plate that allows you to install it in any generation control box we've already made. And we're gonna show you how to install this into your control box. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over to where Josh is on a table and disconnect a control box. Hey guys, how y'all doing? I'm gonna take apart the brain box from the table. First things first is just connect all your VRL cables. And they should be all color coordinated, but just make sure before you disconnect them that you do see the color zip tie. If it doesn't have it, then add your own color zip tie so you know which connector goes to what. Unplug it from the wall so that it has no power because the stuff that we're doing, we don't want to have any power going through the control box. We're going to take it over to our workstation. Inside of this control box, we're going to remove this red board, we're going to remove this Mach 3 board, and we're also going to remove this screw terminal. Depending on how old your control box is, you may also have a cutting voltage board right here that looks kind of like this one, but white or black. That's also going to get removed. And if you have a six position screw terminal that's down here that looks just like this one, that's also going to get removed. To do that, we have to remove this nut here and this nut, there would be a nut down here too. Um, so that we can pull this panel out and get access to the nuts on the back of these. The rest of them we're gonna leave. So when we take this off, we're gonna leave all those standoffs in place, but we need to get access to the back in order to take this off. And if you have that one down here, same thing. So first thing we're gonna do is remove these mounting brackets. for removing that bracket is because this screw that holds that panel in is underneath that plate so now that it's off we have access to it on our newer ones we did wing nuts which make it really easy to take it off uh, your table may have regular nuts but take out this bolt you should have one more bolt that's right here take that one out as well and next we need to pull all of these cables back through this hole right here because we're gonna lean this entire control panel forward so we can get access to that backside. So we're just gonna feed through one at a time. All right, Josh, see if you can tilt that panel forward now. Let's go ahead actually and remove these two modules, which you're gonna reuse on the new board. And we don't want them in the way because they're the most fragile pieces that could get messed up. I think that's it. Let's go ahead and disconnect all of these jumpers right here just to give ourselves as much room as we can. Oh, you know what, I'm sorry. Take this thing out too. I forgot that I was catching on me when I was doing that before. And keep in mind, you've got this stuff right here that can catch. All right, and now we're catching on these things down here. What are we hitting on first, the CNC cable? Let's remove this CNC cable and get it out of the way. Okay, if you have one of our newer boards, one of these red boards like this, you're gonna have these extension cables that bring it over to the Mach 3 board to fire the plasma. Just disconnect those from these spade connectors for now so that they're out of the way. We're also gonna be eliminating this cutting voltage module that we've sent to some people and we were including with all of our new tables. The new board has this built in so you don't need it. So we're gonna cut these zip ties and disconnect this CNC cable to get it out of our way. That way we have more access to flip it forward. And then cut those zip ties so that we can slide it out of the way.
these are the two nuts that go to that screw terminal that we're gonna take off. Come back to this front. We're gonna pop this plastic piece off. And those are the two screws right there for undoing it. First, we're gonna undo all of these wires right here. We can leave all of these still connected because all of this is gonna come out as one, but we're gonna disconnect all these wires right here. Perfect. Now we're going to undo all the screw or all of the wires that are still connected to something. So for this, we're going to undo these. And then we're also going to undo these two wires right here that are providing power to this breadboard. Now we're going to undo all the screws that are holding in this board and this red board as well. If we had the board down here, instead of it being mounted on the red board, if your cutting voltage board is right here, you want to take that off as well. And don't forget, we took off this top screw terminal. If you have another six position screw terminal down here, that needs to get disconnected as well. Save the screws if you can, because we're gonna use these same screws to reattach the new board. disconnect that's the led connector right here that goes to this so that's it all of that stuff is coming out this is all you should have left when you're done no other boards in this area you should have your power supplies this main screw terminal that handles all the power coming in and your drivers over here but nothing else should be in this area the next thing we're going to do is cut this zip tie right here because we need a little extra room for these wires to be able to reach to the new board but first what we'll do is re-put this back in because we don't need it to be loose anymore and we might as well get it back where it was. Where's that uh, long screw we were using? On your ago. left, yeah. All right, panel is back in. Let's go ahead and remove this cutting voltage module because we're no longer gonna need it. If you have that cutting voltage monitored, not a lot of control boxes do, but it connects down to this large power supply. This adapter plate is gonna have holes cut in it to match up to any of these. They may be in different positions depending on the generation of control box that you have, but this adapter plate is gonna have holes to line up no matter what. And you don't need to have a screw in every single one. You just need to have about four or five screws in there. That's more than enough that's gonna hold everything in place. All right, so we're gonna take this adapter plate, set it in here, make sure it's not crushing any other wires. 
and line it up so that it's on the brass standoffs. And if it's lined up correctly, it should be lined up on several of them. All right, go ahead, Josh, you got some ready? Good deal. So what we're gonna do now, we don't need this to be as long as it is. These two wires are going straight to this connector right here and all of these connectors pull off. So they're really easy to use. What we're gonna do is size up how much we need. That looks like it's more than enough. So we're gonna cut this to that length because we're gonna use the rest of it for another section. So go ahead. All right. Okay, we'll twist them. And we're gonna take this off. And you can see if you look down here, positive is on the left and negative is on the right. Now on this little power supply, this is our 12 volt power supply and all it has to do is provide power to right there. And these two wires, you can look on the face of this, see if you can see on the face, if you can see those indentations where it marks what they are, you should see V plus and V negative. The color of these wires may be different. So you may not have red and you may not have black. The most important thing is to make sure that you know which wire is going to be positive and which wire is going to be negative. This is the adapter that we're using. This is the way that it goes in. So on the left side, we're putting the V positive, which in our case is this red. And on the right side, we're doing the V negative, which in our case is this black. It's got little flathead screws that we use to open it up. Thanks. Once those are tight, we'll put them back on here. And just double check again that you got on the left side is our V positive and on the right side is our V negative. Okay, now we will do the CNC cable. And you can see on the CNC cable, everything is labeled. Trigger, positive, negative is for the cutting voltage and then arc okay. Arc OK and trigger do not have a polarity, so it doesn't matter what order you put those wires in. Cutting voltage does, and on these boards, positive is correct for positive and negative is correct for negative. So we're gonna go ahead on this CNC cable, since it had those spade connectors, we're gonna cut those spade connectors off and strip them so that all the wires look exactly the same. Feed the CNC cable back through the opening. First thing we're gonna do is the trigger wires, which are the brown and the blue. I'll let you do that, Josh. In this one, it's brown and yellow. The CNC cables so change, so yeah, blue and yellow, sorry.
Okay. The next two that we're doing are the, are the cutting voltage and let's set this over here so we know exactly where they are. So right next to this trigger wire is gonna be the cutting voltage positive and then it's gonna be the cutting voltage negative. So for our CNC cables, red is positive and black is negative. So we're gonna do the red wire right next to this yellow and then the black wire right after that. that we have in these positions which is the arc okay right here is on our cnc cables it's the green and the white wire and again it does not matter the polarity that you do them in so either one can go to either one Perfect, CNC cable is ready. So we're gonna place it back onto this, push it in so that it's snug. The next thing we're gonna do is put two wires to here and we're gonna use the two pieces that we cut off of this wire over here. And this needs AC voltage, which is coming from this screw terminal. So we've got positive, well, we've got one side of the 110 and the other side of the 110 and these go across each other. So we're gonna put one wire to this set of screws and one wire to this set of screws and it does not matter the polarity. So we'll take those two wires that we cut off, we're gonna strip them so both ends are ready to go. Now that we've got these wires stripped, we don't want them to be excessively long, but we do want them to be long enough that they can get a grip. We're gonna take one and put it underneath this screw. Just make sure that you don't let that wire pop out or this other black wire pop out. And then we're gonna put the other one on this screw and same thing, we wanna make sure that neither one of those wires pop out. If it's easier for you, you can put them on this side too. It's not gonna matter. It is nice to have all of them coming off off of this side, but you can absolutely add them right here, which might be easier to do. In fact, that's what we'll do for this one, just so that you can see. So take these, Josh, and put one of them where the yellow wire is and one of them where that white wire is. And don't worry about the colors of these. What matters is that it's the top two that we're going to. Sometimes it's easier to pre-bend the wire like this so that you can hook it underneath that screw. Otherwise, if it's straight, it can be real hard to get it under. So you'll see when Josh puts it in, it's a lot easier with it bent. Perfect. Now, these two wires are going to this plug right here and polarity doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter which side is which color. Let's twist these up again. I'll do it. Make sure when you're done that there are no strands touching each other and that the wires are in cleanly. Put that on and that's it.
we're done for this entire bottom section down here. The last thing we need to do is wire in the limit switches at the top and connect the drivers. Now we're gonna reconnect the jumpers that go to the drivers. Depending on your control box, you may have two different sizes. You may have two long ones and two short ones. The two short ones are for the middle ones and the long ones are for the outside ones. If you have four long ones, then it doesn't matter. The top is a long one and they just go in order. So the top driver goes to the top connector right here. Next one down is a short one and it's gonna to go to the very next spot down. This is a short one also. So it's gonna go there, very next one down. And the last one is a long one. It'll go there and go to the last one. And that's it for those. You can zip tie those together if you want just to make it cleaner. Last thing we have are the limit switches up here. If you have the engraver and the mister, each of those has two wires. The engraver has a positive and a negative. The E is the positive and then the negative. On the mister, the M is the positive and then the negative is right next to it. We don't have a mister or engraver set up on this control box so I can't show you, but it's very easy. You would just disconnect this thing and then put the mister on these two and then put the engraver on these two and you'd be done. For this one, we are gonna do the Y limit switches and we have the Y left and the Y right. There is no real polarity with these, even though we show you a negative and a Y left and a Y right. You can use either one, but remember the Y left limit switch is gonna be this green or neon color, and the right side is gonna be this red color right here. So we're doing the limit switch on the right side of the robot right now, which is this red zip tie, and that is the right side of this connector. And again, it does not matter polarity. And it doesn't matter if they're red and white wires or if they're blue and brown wires. There are gonna be two wires though coming out of that cable that has a red zip tie. Now we're gonna do the left side Y limit switch. And it goes on the other side of that same connector. All right, now that all four of these are on, we're gonna put them right here in this middle section for the limit switches, and we are done with our Y limit switches. We're also gonna go ahead and connect the LED display that we have, and if you notice on this connector, it has these two little mark, or these two little tabs. On this side, it doesn't. We want the smooth side to be up. Here, shoot. The last connection that we have to make is for this section right here, which is the X limit switch, the Z home limit switch, which is the top one, and then the surface limit switch, which is also the breakaway switch. So it's this purple zip tie cable that always goes for all three of those limit switches. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it in, and on these cables and on the newer tables, the color order is yellow, black, What's the next one? Blue, red. Blue, red. So yellow, black, blue, red. And that's how we're gonna set up this one. All right, so now we've got all of the colors. We're gonna put this, we may have to pull this through a little bit to get enough length. And then we're gonna put this on here. And we are done with all of the wiring stuff. Now we're gonna take our modules. We've got the SD card module. We're gonna stick it back on. It faces with the metal piece coming out this way. Make sure you line up those pins. It's easy to get it off one way or the other. Same thing, we're putting in our Bluetooth and it goes right here. 
and same thing points this way. This new board is capable of powering the new Bluetooth modules that we've been talking about that have awesome connectivity. Um, so just keep that in mind. But that's pretty much it for everything. The next thing we're gonna do is just plug this in and turn it on and see if everything comes on like it should. If this is blinking right here, then we've got good power coming into this, into the board. All of these are on still, the display is on, so we're looking good. So we'll unplug it, we'll take it back over to the control box, or take it back over to the table. We're ready to plug this in and turn it on. The number one important thing to check is that these two wires are going down to that screw terminal and plugging in on this far right connector. And these two wires are going to this power supply right here and match the V positive to positive and the V negative to negative. As long as those two things are okay, the rest of this is, is pretty impervious to anything. Those are the most sensitive pieces for the power. Put your grommet back in a circle for your VRL cables. There is a slit in between it. All you're gonna do is set it on the metal in the hole. <laughs> and then you're gonna kind of walk it around just a bit. If you're like me, you don't know what you're doing with, it's no big deal. Take it till you make it. Kind of just get in there a little. And then all you're gonna do is just feed these back through. Just start with one at a time. Try and separate them so that they don't get all tangled up coming through. Yeah, perfect. So the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna connect all of these cables. However, we are gonna leave this yellow zip tied cable disconnected because this is the one that goes to the Z axis. And the first thing we're gonna do once we connect to the table, we're not gonna home, we're not gonna do anything, but verify that the limit switches all register exactly as they should on the controller screen. We may have to update the table first because if you're putting in a new board, it may not be programmed. So it's okay to do the update process. But if it asks you to home or to calibrate the z-axis immediately say no you're not going to do that the first thing you're going to do is open up the controller screen and verify the limit switches once we verify the limit switches are good then we'll plug in this one so that the z-axis motor has power so we have all of them disconnect or we have all of them connected except for the one that has a yellow zip tie and remember there are two that are kind of yellow this one is a neon green yellow this one is going to be a three prong the one that controls the Z motor is gonna be yellow and it's gonna be five pins. So now we'll connect with the tablet. Well, first I guess we'll turn the control box on. <clears throat> right away you can see that this is asking us to update. So that's the very first thing that we're gonna do. If it did not ask us to update, close out of everything, go to the settings, table settings, update table, and click this button right here. It's the same thing as that screen that pops up, but if you don't see that screen, you need to update the table to make it match the software that's on this tablet before you do anything else. There it is. All right, so when it comes back, it's gonna ask you to select your table size. We are gonna go forward with this process. We just don't wanna move anything on the table. So this is a four by eight. We'll select a four by eight. Go to next. Table is restarting again. When it comes back, it's gonna be ready with the four by eight dimensions. It's back. It's gonna say, first thing it wants to do is home the table. We don't wanna do any of this. So we're gonna cancel out of this and we're gonna open the controller screen. Up in this section are all of the indicators for the limit switches. On the Y, you see that there's one on the left and one on the right. The one on the right is not gonna register no matter what, so don't worry about that one. We wanna make sure the X registers as the X and the X is gonna be right there on the back of the X axis. Right there. And then we wanna check the Y limit switch, which is gonna be over here on the side of the table right there. 
and then we want to check the surface and the breakaway. Well, first let's check the Y because we're right here. Oops, sorry. So let's press this and we can see that Y is lighting up like it should. So now we're going to go over to the X. We're going to press X and we can see that X is lighting up like it should. Can you see where that X limit yeah, switch is? Yeah. And bring the tablet in. Tilt the yeah, There you go. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay, next thing we're going to check is the Z axis and we need to check that top limit switch and we need to check the surface switch, which is also the breakaway. So since we have the motor unplugged, we can manually twist this silver barrel to lower it so that it's not pressing that top limit switch. Then reach in with your finger and press that top limit switch and see if it registers a Z on the tablet. Yep, we can see that it's registering a Z. Okay, and so now that we saw that the Z surface switch is responding like it should, then the next thing we're gonna do is pick up on this and see if the surface switch is registering when we pick up. And it is. That means every one of our limit switches is registering like they're supposed to be. If you go to any of these limit switches and you go to press them and it triggers a different one on here, do not run your table. Contact us and we'll tell you how to correct the wiring, but do not try and home your table. But that's it. Let's go back and look at the control box. So this is what your control box will look like after having that new board installed. It's a much cleaner design. It's a much more robust design. Everything is isolated on it. It's already designed to handle the new Bluetooth modules. It's got the cutting voltage module built in. Everything about it is an improvement. And that's it. If you have any questions when you're doing it, just give us a call and we'll walk you through it.